Hello and good evening once again, YouTube. This is some more NASCAR Thunder 2004. So last race was the worthless all-star race. Sterling Marlin won. Who cares? I lead by 45 points over Ryan Newman. Uh, four poles, two wins, six top fives, and ten top tens. Average start of 11.5, an average finish of a 97.9. It is time for the Coca-Cola 600, the longest race in the game. Taking place at Charlotte. And we're gonna freaking do it, so it's gonna be amazing, probably. As unlikely as it sounds, you know? So let us do our nice little qualifying excursion here in the Pennzoil number one, like always. A nice solid 170 through that corner could have done better, but I'm not really caring about that right now. Uh, there you go. That's the nice 170 you are supposed to be doing. First lap is going to be 6th place, and I can do way better than that, so this is probably going to be a pole run. Just a hunch on my part. Off of that corner, not as good as it could have been once again. But if I execute this corner well, it'll be okay off the bottom of the track where I should be. So this lap could be shit in the end. And it was. Great. So we're starting on the outside, which only spells danger for me. Okay! Sixth place apparently equals pole these days, so I don't know what in the hell this game's deal is. What has happened? What is wrong with this game? For whatever reason, I'm getting sixth place starting spots, ending up on the pole, finishing first in the qualifier at Day the duel at Daytona, but but then starting first instead of third. In the Newman constantly, so that's probably gonna be sixty. Fantastic. A useless rival again. Cause that's all that this game ever fucking does, is give you thousands of rivals when you fucking tap into someone. So this is marvelous, I should just let them go by so I can get rid of that. Cause it's fucking annoying. He's probably not gonna go cleanly by either, he's probably gonna come oh, up there we go. Executed that good enough so that he'd fuck off without hitting into me, so that's fantastic. God, this game's a fucking asshole. Yeah, and whose fucking fault is that game? Oh yeah, yours. Fuck you. So let's execute this shit and try and catch up. Doing a bad job of catching up. Good. Yep. Oh, fuck you. I had it down to 48, this game's a douchebag points, but then it went back up to 52, this game's a douchebag points, because this game's a douchebag. Got him down to 26, this game's a douchebag point, so I think that's good enough for me to get past him without having to worry too much about his antics. Then again, getting past him is an entirely different quotient than getting behind him and drafting, so. And Stewart's been back there the whole time, so the game's been going crazy trying to make me feel worried about what he's gonna do. Trying to fear monger me into voting Hillary Clinton, but whatever game. I don't care what Tony might do. I only care about what Hillary Clinton will do, okay? So, don't bitch at me when I vote Tony. Still there. Okay, we're back I only executed this corner horribly, so I don't want to get into him again and make him be a 60 rival a fucking again, because this game's an asshole. I'd be past him right now if I wasn't trying to play it that conservative. And that is a guarantee. I'm, uh, I moved him up a lane, so... We should have caught up to him, but instead everyone else just caught up to us a little bit. But moving him up a lane was helpful, because I was up a lane. And if I'd been up a lane and he hadn't moved up a lane, then, you know, things wouldn't have been that great. 
So he's pulling away now. I'm starting to get pissed. I'd like this game to stop being an asshole for just one moment so I can catch up to Ryan Newman. Executed that corner pretty well. So let's freaking catch him again. Okay. He moved up a lane. Oh, nearly on the side of him, but we're going to take the shortcut down low. I think we're clear. We are indeed clear, so let's try and execute this corner well enough to keep him back. That was good enough, I guess. I just have to come up ahead of him. Or not. Nope, we're pulling away. So finally back to the lead. That was a tedious first 10 laps, but, you know, you just got to do what you got to got to roll with the punches with this game, dude. Got to roll with it. So, yeah. Ricky Rudd's in fifth. It's very good in this season mode. Usually, Rudd and Elliot aren't as consistent, but they are in this career mode for some reason. Of course, I got down on the apron, so I was loose as fuck. So not only has Newman caught me, but so has everyone fucking else and their mothers. So, keeping the lead is going to be even more interesting. This is a far more interesting race than, say, Atlanta. But it's not as fun as Texas yet, because Texas wasn't a douchebag. Unlike this, which was a douchebag straight out the gate. So, not having as much fun as I did at Texas, but I'm trying to keep the lead here. Looks like we can go about 24 laps on a tank of fuel. In which case, that means we will most likely be going down pit road on lap 18 or so. So let's hope this game doesn't fuck me in the ass any more than it already has. And then we'll wait for pit sequences. I got that Spongebob Rip Pants song stuck in my head. Which is strange, because I haven't seen the episode in a good five years. When Big Larry came around just to put him down Spongebob turned into a clown And no girl ever wants to dance With the fool that went and ripped his pants See, I, I've not heard that song in five fucking years But I still have it fucking memorized That show was magic in its first 35 seasons or so And no, I'm not saying 35 seasons I mean five, three or five what a magical show that was. So it's lap 18, but no one's gone down to pit yet, so I guess I can say I one more lap. I really don't need to pit before anyone else. I just want to get on pit road with other people so that they don't have better equipment than me and they don't get too far out ahead of me with their fresher stuff. That's basically what I'm trying to say here. So people are going down this time, though. So I could have gone down on 18, but I didn't. But I didn't. A couple of nice lead laps in with the uh, 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 number one men's on car. Chevrolet! I climb to my... Oh, I'm sorry. Pit road time. I've been getting really loose in the exit of four, so I think I will... No, I'm sure as fucking shit I'm not loosening the car. I'll tighten it a half round. All four tires, a full tank. A full tank of gas. A full tank of gasoline in my Chevrolet Monte Carlo. As I travel down these country roads trying to get back to my farm. If it wasn't, you know, a half an hour after I woke up, my voice would be singable, or tolerable, not even just singable, just tolerable in general. In general. So, is that it for position? Was I in 16th and now I'm in 18th? I can't tell. I wasn't paying attention, enough attention. But it looks like Gordon's trying to go down pit road, so... I'm going to give him the bottom lane if he wants to do that. And there he goes, indeed. Down pit road, so... Interesting strategy by the number 31 of Robbie Gordon, who used his car to indicate that he was going down pit road to give me a signal as a driver to get out of his way. 
very interesting uh, trials and tribulations on the racetrack. But it looks like I'm pretty sure that Labonte is ahead of me at the moment. The wall, only slightly, surprisingly. Usually it's like full brontal impact and cephalon injury. Concussion related shit, but yeah. Was the DEI number one car cursed? Because it ruined Steve Park's career. Well, maybe not. Maybe didn't ruin it. Kind of made it, in a sense. Because I don't think Steve Park would have exactly set the world on fire. And he didn't get his career ending. He did get a concussion driving the one, but not a career ending one. And then Jeff Green drove it, and we all know how Jeff Green's career went. And then, I don't know who drove it, and then Truex drove it, and he got a win in 2007, but would not win again until 2013. I was, I was curious. Of course, a fucking course you hit the wall because, you know, you can't do enough of that in the race, but I was curious. What's the longest time between a driver's first career win and his second career win, because I feel like Truex has that title locked up. Could you fucking stop flying into the goddamn wall? Is this because I tightened the car up because I didn't want to fly into the fucking spin out, not fly into the wall, but spin out after every turn? Lost a tenth that lap, and Tony's been all over my ass. So it appears that my strategic decision to tighten the car slightly was a mistake and a half. Which is very helpful. Hopefully it improves along the run and I can like freaking get out of the corners at full, full speed. Without sliding into a, no, I'm still sliding into a that coming out of turn four, so... This adjustment has only harmed me. I did pick up a, a tenth of a second on Lamani, but I don't think it's going to be nearly enough of a improvement to catch back up. So, second, second, second will be the best that I can do as long as I can keep it together and not slam into the wall 15 more times. But, you know, there's still a whole 11 more laps for me to be able to do that. So, yeah. Let's see what we can do. Well, this is incredible. I thought for sure I wasn't going to be good enough to execute these corners and catch up to Labonte, but wow, I've written myself off, and yet here I am now. In his draft, three laps remain in the Coca-Cola 600, and I'm half a second back on Labonte now. I can definitely sniff that lead out. I'm moving Labonte off from the preferred lane. I did not anticipate being good enough to execute those corners. This is very interesting. Executing this good this long, and lap traffic even is coming into a factor here now, two to go. This is incredible. Never thought I'd be able to catch up to the Bonnie. after falling so far behind. 
But I am actually making a move on him. But Levani was also trying to make a move himself. So. This is the last lap, so let's see if I can do it. You better not block you better not block me, LePage, because I swear to fucking god I am coming with a full head of steam into turn one. Side by side with Levani now. Just gotta be able to slow down enough to make it stick. And I have completely gotten past the number 18. Wow, okay. Now Kevin Grubb is my only, um, only potential issue here. Just gotta execute this corner well enough. Wow, okay. That was an impressive run to the finish. Some of the best racing I've ever done. But I managed to get past a three second lead and catch Labonte. Kurt Busch was catching us too, so he was probably the faster car on the track, but I managed to catch up. That was an impressive event. Shit. That was much better than the All-Star Race. Gotta say. Gotta say. The celebration begins. A great run by Jeff Green. Coming down to win. Coca-Cola 600. The celebration is on. Amazing show. Creepy looking lady. Creepy looking Winston lady. This old Jeff Green hoists the Code Code 600 trophy. Amazing showing. Fantastic. And Tony's finally not going to be an asshole anymore. I can't believe it. It's a Christmas goddamn miracle. Never thought I'd see the day. So that should extend my points lead. Labonte did finish second, and I don't know if he led the most laughs, but... If anything, I'll have gained five points, or he'll have lost five points. It appears to be the case. Oh, hang on a second. I need to render out one last video here, and then I can, like, delete some shit. And that will make a difference of about um, over like about 35 gigs of space because for some reason NASCAR Heat Evolution likes to fucking be the size of goddamn Jupiter on the hard drive. So I know the game is ready for me to go now, but I'm just going to finish rendering out this last part. And there you have it. Okay, back there. Okay, so. After that, we're going to go back, I mean, for the first time to Dover. So, Coca-Cola 600 won by the Jeff of Green family. Newman was in second, so now I'm 74 points ahead of Ryan Newman. Five poles, except I actually started sixth, but whatever. Three wins, seven top fives, 11 top tens, average start of 10.6, and an average finish of 7.3. So that is how that is looking. Are we leading? Okay, so, um... Casey Mears appears to have made up about 50 points on Jamie McMurray. I lead the pole award, and I now lead the laps champion. Mark Martin still only has one win, unfortunately, but... That's just how it is sometimes, so... In any case, I'm gonna change my paint scheme for the next race. We'll do 2001. So thank you all so much for watching. This has been Kamikaze Games NASCAR Thunder 2004 Season Mode. It's Jeff Green, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Are we good?